to think about viruses, uh, retroviruses in humans. And it was coupled with the strong belief by the mid-1970s that no virus caused any cancer in man. There was a, a meeting at Cold Spring Harbor on the origins of human cancer, and that essentially was the conclusion. And yet, by 1980, 81, those kind of, uh, let's call them biases, were destroyed. We discovered a human leukemia virus. We called it HTLV1, human T-cell leukemia virus 1. Later, I suggested calling it lymphotropic virus to avoid people getting too nervous if you carried that virus because it doesn't mean that a person who carries it is going to infect you or anything else that requires exchange of bodily fluids, just like HIV does, and it takes a very long time and might require other events besides the virus. But in the 1970s, our, my colleagues and myself uh, in, embarked upon trying to find them in humans at a very bad time. By, by the early 1980s, we had discovered human retroviruses, and by the early 1980s, it was clear viruses could cause cancer, and by now we know that it's probably a little over 20% of all human cancer involves a virus at one stage or another, and, it, it, and maybe infectious causes of human cancer are, are going to go up. But it's a complex pattern. It does not mean somebody with cancer walks into a room, you're in danger from them. Absolutely not. Okay, so that's not the case.